I told you. Seriously? Totally. How do I decide? One pair at a time, girl. One pair at a time. <laughs> This fall, visit Off-Broadway Shoes, where you'll find the season's hottest styles, all at affordable prices. With over 40,000 pairs, we've always got your style. Off-Broadway Shoes. Win great stuff from your favorite stores. Just like 7 News on Facebook. 7 News Now begins right now. Right now, the CDC is releasing an update on the listeria outbreak. 21 deaths have now been linked to the contaminated cantaloupe. We'll have more on the latest information in the outbreak in a few minutes. Right now, the big story is the changing Colorado weather. Radar just starting to light up there uh, south of the metro area. It's just the beginning of another big front that is moving in. And a live look outside right now. Wow, beautiful. Blue skies over Denver right now, but that is about to change in a big way. Let's get right to Matt Makins right now. Matt, weather and change in Colorado, they're like no, this, man. They love each other. Yeah, that and never happened. Here. We're talking snow on the way here? Snow is on the way. Maybe Douglas County, Jefferson County accumulating snowfall by tomorrow morning. But as you said, right now, the calm before the storm, quiet, mostly 60s with some 50s out there as well. 61 in Boulder, 64 in Littleton. Blackhawk is 43 degrees. Now across the state, 30s and 40s in the high country where they had that snowfall from yesterday. Additional snow is on the way. Now, the last 12 hours have been very quiet across the state, but clouds are popping up down across the south. Rain starting to approach Pueblo, and that's that rain that'll move towards Denver this evening, turn into some snow for the foothills. In fact, a lot of snow will be possible. Up in Steamboat Springs right now, we are fairly quiet. You can see some cloud cover, but overall a beautiful afternoon. We do have winter weather advisories and freeze watches for most of the at least half of the state. Winter weather advisories close to Denver. Freeze watches from Steamboat to Craig to Grand Junction. Let me zoom into the front range. And these areas, winter weather advisory from Denver to the west, close to western Boulder County, Jefferson, and Douglas counties. We do have the chance for accumulating snowfall. Coming up, we'll talk about how much snow these neighborhoods will see. You'll notice the changes from 7 to 10 o'clock. That's when our temperatures are really going to drop. And Lionel, that's when the rain will start to pick up and we'll change to snow by tomorrow morning. All right, Matt, we'll see you just a little bit later. All right. Breaking news right now, Boulder police investigating a near drowning in a fishing pond near Boulder Creek. Two boys fishing in the area saw a man splashing in the water just about 1 o'clock today, and then he stopped moving. They flagged down a woman walking nearby. She jumped into the water, pulled the man out, and started CPR. Now he's been taken to the hospital. We will update you as we get more details. New details now about an apparent street race that went very bad. Take a look at the aftermath here. Two people in the hospital after the crash, including the innocent driver of a car not even involved in that race. 7 News reporter Lance Hernandez is at the hospital. Lance, police tell you the racers are doing at least 80 miles an hour. And that's just an estimate, Lionel. Police say it's possible they were going much faster. Now, either way, a third driver who was struck by one of the alleged racers is in ICU here at Medical Center of Aurora. Now, this is what the crash scene looked like last night. The yellow car is a Chevy Cobalt. Police say it was one of the cars involved in the race. It struck a Honda CRV, which was northbound on Aurora Parkway, turning left onto Commons. Police say the driver of the Cobalt denied being involved in a race. The driver's statement to officers at the hospital was that he was not involved in a street race. He was driving home. Do you guys believe that story? Based on witnesses, several witnesses are indicating that this gray car and the Cobalt were involved in a high speed. Now, police are still looking for the other car. They describe it as a small gray car. They're asking for the public's help tracking it down. By the way, the posted speed limit at that intersection is 45 miles per hour. Live in Aurora, Lance Hernandez, 7 News. All right, Lance, thank you very much. Right now, federal health investigators say 21 people have died from the listeria outbreak. This is video of Jensen Farms in Holly, Colorado, where the contaminated cantaloupe came from. The new deaths were in Indiana and New York. Now, the Center for Disease Control is also confirming Listeria was responsible for the person who died in Wyoming last week. So far, 109 people have gotten sick from the contaminated cantaloupes. Five people have died here in Colorado. Developing now in California, the federal government is cracking down on medical marijuana dispensaries. The state's attorney general just announced owners of dispensaries could face criminal charges or have their property confiscated if they don't shut down in 45 days. Now, just like Colorado, 
California state law says it's legal to smoke medical marijuana, but the federal law says it is not. At least 16 dispensaries in California received letters this week with that warning to shut down. Now, we're investigating the story right now on a local level, and at 5 o'clock, 7 News takes a closer look at pot dispensaries here in Colorado and if that same thing could happen here. Now, new details in the case has become known as the uh, Weekend at Bernie's incident. The uh, coroner's office released the cause of death of the victim this afternoon. Jeffrey Garrett died of drug intoxication. Police say two of Garrett's friends took the man's body to two local restaurants. They drank and ate inside while the body was left outside in an SUV. Now, the men used uh, Jarrett's credit cards to pay for the drinks. Police say Jarrett owed them money. New details today in the case involving State Senator Suzanne Williams and a car accident. Uh, she pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor charge of driving on the wrong side of the road in Texas. Last December, her SUV crossed the center line of a highway in Texas, hit another car, and that killed 30-year-old Brianna Gomez. With the plea, Senator Williams paid a $200 fine and court cost. She was cleared of any criminal wrongdoing in that case. Now, police are asking you for help after yet another police impersonator case. The victim says the impersonator sexually assaulted her before she was able to get away. This is the sketch of the man she says attacked her. Police say she, he's uh, 35 years old, white, about 5'11", 190 pounds, with light-colored eyes, balding or short-cropped hair, and he was wearing a baseball cap, dark-colored button-up shirt, and dark pants. That attack happened last Wednesday, September 28th. Now, the woman told police she was at the bus stop on 32nd and Federal when the man approached with a gun. He was in a blue Mercedes. He drove her to an isolated area near 45th and North Irving Street where the attack happened. And now to the national case of a missing 10-month-old baby. It's been three days since Lisa Irwin went missing, and the girl's parents say they had nothing to do with it. But as ABC's Scott Goldberg tells us, police are not so sure. Four days after 10-month-old Lisa Irwin disappeared from her parents' home in Kansas City, police are searching at a nearby landfill and say the baby's parents stopped cooperating. I don't want to pass judgment because, you know, I have no idea what they're going through, but at the same time, it makes you wonder. Speculation has begun to swirl around the parents, Jeremy Irwin and Deborah Bradley, who say they just needed a break after three days of what they called tough police tactics. Lisa's mother said police told her she also failed a polygraph test. They said, um, look at your baby and um, do what's right for her. And I kept saying, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Lisa's father said the questioning was too much. We were in interrogation for a really long time and I just, I couldn't take it anymore. The parents say the infant was the victim of a very rare crime, that a stranger took Lisa out of her crib in the middle of the night, and that it happened to be the one night her father worked an overnight shift, and her mother happened to leave the door to their home unlocked. Everything's on the table, just like I've been saying for three days now, nothing's changed. Lisa's parents say they had nothing to do with the kidnapping and are still cooperating with detectives. Whatever I've got to do to get her home, we'll do it. The FBI says this is the second time investigators have gone through that landfill just outside of Kansas City. A spokeswoman confirms this search is related to Lisa Irwin's disappearance, but would not provide any other details. Scott Goldberg, ABC News. You can get more on this story on World News with Diane Sawyer right after 7 News at 5 o'clock. Let's check the stocks. Time for a look at business news now. On Wall Street today, the Dow dropped nearly 20 points. It was up 80 right before. The closing bell, the NASDAQ dropped 27.47, the S&P was down nearly 10. Now, the jobs report today did little to help the markets. The Labor Department says just 103 jobs were added nationwide in September. And that news is coming as protests and anger at financial institutions grow around the nation. President Obama has said he shares the frustration of those demonstrators. There is no question that the economy has slowed, growth has slowed, and job creation has slowed. Employment is still uh, too weak, and uh, it is, I think, obvious to everyone, virtually, that we need to take action. Well, it's happening here. This is a scene this afternoon at Civic Center Park. Protesters from occupied Denver say they're here for the same reasons as demonstrators across the country. They're standing against corporate greed, uh, some want everybody to have health care, 
and they want the 1% of Americans who make the most money to pay more taxes. They say they're camping out here for the long haul, but not everybody we talked to at the Denver event had any idea what the protest was about. We're digging into that and who's organizing this protest. We'll have that tonight on 7 News at 10. Well, today, jurors in the Dr. Conrad Murray trial heard an interview the doctor did with a detective two days after the death of Michael Jackson. The detective says Dr. Murray told him he was giving Jackson the anesthetic drug propofol as a sleep aid. Also today, a toxicologist testified a range of drugs were present in Jackson's system at his death, but there was that one that raised concerns. Propofol in any case that we handle is important, probably more important than many of the other drugs that we deal with. Well, Dr. Murray has pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter in the death of Michael Jackson, but if he's convicted, he faces up to four years in prison and the loss of his medical license. Uh, Britain's Prince Harry in the United States now for two months of flight training on helicopter gunships. Harry will be learning about flight awareness, desert landings, and weapon systems. The prince is known in the Army as Captain Harry Wales, and the U.S. Navy says he will not get any special treatment while he's here. Well, the winners of this year's Nobel Peace Prize ahead. Also, certain headaches and other health problems can be confused as symptoms of stroke. What they are and what parents should do about them. And take a look at all this snow, a Colorado ski resort opening this weekend. And there's more moisture in the mountains right now. You can see it to the northwest and the southwest. And this may not look much down near Pueblo, but that's going to be the rain and snow for the Denver area. I'll show you when it will arrive coming up. You've been watching 10 minutes of nonstop news here on 7 News at 3. This portion of 7 News is brought to you by Colorado Dance Sport, where dancing meets health and happiness. Call now and get your first three lessons for just $25. Like getting free stuff from your favorite course and just like us on Facebook because we like our fans so much. We are giving away some great gifts. And make sure to watch 7 News every day. Like, watch, win with 7 News. Do you remember when movie tickets were under $3? A lot of things have come and gone, but there's always a need for a warm coat. Coats for Colorado, celebrating 30 years. Donate at any Dependable Cleaners location. Today is going to be a good day. America's fastest growing broadband company is here. We're CenturyLink and we're ready. Ready to link you to a consistently fast broadband network. One we're continuing to invest in. But more importantly, we're hiring our neighbors, your neighbors. Because what's kept us growing for over 80 years is our people. The ones who link you to the very things that make life better. Better broadband, better service, better value. We are CenturyLink. Hey, it's Beth. No, don't take a detour. So she rocked the bake sale fundraiser. Big deal. With those glasses, you're rocking aisle six. And a lot of spandex. In a good way. Find the look that works for you with VisionWorks selection, service, and prices. Now get two complete pairs of eyeglasses, including no-line bifocals, just $99. You can even get the second pair for a friend. VisionWorks. That works. Discover why one out of two women, tempted by a cosmetic procedure, decided to postpone it. New Visionnaire by Lancôme, the first advanced skin corrector with LR2412, a molecule designed to penetrate through skin layers. Wrinkles, pores, unevenness are visibly corrected. A flawless skin is recreated, clinically proven on all skin tones. Visionnaire, our new vision of skin perfection, only by Lancôme, now at Dillard's. Before I came to HRC, I was so tired and fatigued all the time that I just could not even get out of bed. I had no desire to cook, no desire to be with my husband. And I was literally counting the hours before I could go back to bed at night. After HRC's Amore V, I feel like I have woken up. And thanks to HRC's Amore V therapy, I'm enjoying life again. I think that HRC has changed my life. Life gets better with Amore V therapy from HRC Medical. Call today for your free consultation. Introducing the first forecast on 7 News at 10. I'm moving your full forecast into the first 10 minutes of nonstop news. Get ready for your next day with tomorrow's planner to plan your whole week with the 7-day planner. The first forecast on 7 News at 10. Welcome back. Three women share the Nobel Peace Prize this year. They are Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, 
Liberian activists Lima Bohi and Yemeni democracy activist Tawakul Karman. They're being honored for their nonviolent fight for the safety of women and the right of...